Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shaw Craft One and my old barn door and barn door treasures on eBay and digital Diane designs on Etsy for digitals only. And I'm back today. We're working in Mother's Cookbook and I'm going to do some sewing. So I've brought in the sewing machine and we're going to add some, um, some beauties to the edges and I'm going to make this a billowing journal this is I think maybe the first time I've done a ring binder billowing journal can't remember if I've done one before but I don't think I have so something new and um, so we'll just kind of see how it goes now I have gone through oh let me scoop this out <laughs> I'm gonna scoop that out of the way so you can see a little better um, I've gone through the journal and sometimes when I punch my holes um, to put the pages in. Sometimes I get a little wonky when I do my stacking. So what I've done is I've just gone through and added um, reinforcements to the pieces or to the pages um, that were a little wonky and I've just repunched them. Um, that does two things. Um, it gives some reinforcement to the actual page, especially these pages that are vintage and a little bit older and maybe more fragile. Excuse me, but it also gives it a little bit of um, something pretty to look at, too. So, I was trying to flip through and see. I didn't have a whole lot, which I'm usually, I'm surprised because usually I do have quite a few that I get wonky on because I just kind of do it in a hurry. Um, so, yeah. So, I've gone through and I've just reinforced those and added some pretty papers to the edges. And that just adds another um, decorative element to the journal as well and um, makes it so that, you know, your holes are reinforced. Um, I did also go ahead and finish this envelope. I haven't finished the other one, uh, but I did finish this one. Um, I just went ahead and did my, well, I didn't actually stitch this one. Maybe I will stitch this one. Maybe I'll add some stitching to it. Um, I stitched this one. And kind of made it not just a, an envelope but I kind of made it a pocket so um, no I didn't stitch this one either oh this one's the one I stitched no it's not <laughs> I know I stitched something <laughs> I stitched this one this is the one I said I was gonna make an envelope out of so I just kind of trimmed this down a little with a pretty decorative um, a scissor and um, put a little notch on the back side too so this one um, I will add into the journal somewhere um, so I've got a couple of different um, pockets and envelopes to add to the journal but for now I'm just going to leave them in the back here and um, I think I am going to go ahead and take this one out real quick before I forget and do the stitching on it so I'm just going to run it and I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch because um, I think that'll be pretty and it'll add a little bit of an extra element to it. Let me make sure you can see. Now when I stitch um, on envelopes and things like that, um, wherever people are going to be putting things in and out of that particular item, I kind of like to do like a double stitch. I'm having some problems here with my... Let me tighten that up a little and see if that'll do a little better. But anyways, I like to do a double stitch just to give it a little extra strength for the areas where people are going to be taking things in and out of the envelope or the pocket or what have you. So I'm just going to run this through really quickly. See if I can go backwards, back stitch on this one, and hopefully, I don't know what's up with my with my with my tension on here. I'm gonna have to play with it and see what I've got going on. So I'm just gonna stitch both sides. You can do decorative stitches on this, or you know something pretty if you want to. I tend to like the zigzag stitch though. I just think it's pretty stitch. And it just adds a little extra element. And I like doing a messy zigzag stitch. 
um, just to make it look a little imperfect. So it appears that we have some questions on um, the video that I released talking about uh, memberships for the channel to kind of help support the channel. So um, if you have questions, please feel free to send them to me. Um, but um, it's been brought to my attention that um, in order to be a mem become a member, um, I had someone who had a hard time finding it on their phone. So if they were going on YouTube from their phone, um, they couldn't find the join button. Um, let me just clarify, uh, becoming a member is completely different from being a subscriber. If you do not become a member, it does not take your subscribership away. It will not unsubscribe you. It's a completely different entity. And so um, being a subscriber just means that you want to get, um, you know, you want to subscribe to the channel so that you can get the notifications and things like that. And don't forget to hit the bell, the notification bell, because sometimes if you're subscribed for a while um, and you're not watching the videos, then it won't give you any more notifications. But, but if you go in there and you hit the bell, um, it'll make sure that you get notified when I upload new content. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of other questions. Um, that I've had. I think that's all for now. I'm sure there will be others, but basically being a subscriber, um, nothing will change for you. You know, if you don't want to become a member, um, that's fine and nothing will change at all for you. Um, but if you do want to become a member, then you just get the extra perks and, um, you support me and help me to be able to continue providing content. So that's the only difference in the two. Um, so I think one of my friends who was trying to become a member, she couldn't find, uh, it's the join button. Okay. The join button is on the bottom right hand. It's underneath the video. If you're looking at the video, it's underneath the video on the right hand side, uh, should be kind of, um, should be somewhere in the same vicinity as the subscribe button. Okay, should be in that same general area. So you just click on that and it will give you all the details of how you can become a member um, and what perks that you get. So anyways, I think that's all of the questions that I have about that right now. If you have more questions about it, let me know and um, I'll try to get those answered for you. Okay, so enough chit chat. Let's get going. Let's have some fun. All right, so I have these paper clips here simply because I have this piece that my lovely, lovely friend Rhonda sent to me in a box of goodies, and I couldn't resist. I haven't done the video. She sent me a box with a journal for her booth, Rhonda Atchison. Rhonda, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to do that video, but I kind of peaked, <laughs> and I found these wonderful pages. Look at this. Okay, so it's this on the back side. And then on the other side, oh my goodness, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This literally has the feel of tree bark or wood. So I don't know if it's like a veneer or a layer of actual wood, but it feels like it. So I had a fit over it, but it came in a roll, so it's kind of curling. So I've been trying to kind of flatten it out a little better. So that's why I have those paper clips there. So anyways, so I want to put some beautiful pieces on the edges of pages and just do some highlighting on some of the page edges. So I think I want to put a piece here and I kind of want to keep this in the, um, the neutral colors since this is going to be kind of you know, um, kind of farmhousey, and, um, you know, kind of, I'm just trying to keep it with neutral colors because, um, that will go well with my sister's home. Okay. So I have, um, a plate of goodies here that, ha that I thought I could use for, um, pockets and things like that. So I have all kinds of vintage pieces and I'm super, super excited to use these. 
um, in the journal. So some of them will billow out the top, some of them will billow out the sides, and some of them will billow out the bottom. So we're just going to get started. So for this very first one, since this is kind of a cream colored page and you have the white here, and I love the mix of the white with the cream. I love the contrast of that. And so I think I want to do something out here on the edge, maybe in a cream or a vintage. This was, um, I think this is called Battenberg Lace. This was, it looks like a collar um, that was gifted to me from a sweet friend. And so I thought it would be fun to maybe, hmm, that's a little bit overwhelming, isn't it? Let me think about it. I actually think it would be super cute to frame a page with this, but I think I don't want it in the front because then it will kind of overwhelm everything else. Um, I want the bigger pieces to be towards the back. So I'm going to save this piece for the back. Okay, so let's just start simple. I think I'm going to just go with a lacy piece. And so I'm not going to make you watch me do all the sewing because how boring would that be? But I'm going to, um, I'm going to film me, not that I'm making you watch anything. That sounds so rude when I, I don't mean it like that. But anyways, what I'm going to do is, is I'll film me picking, um, what I'm going to put where, and then I will sew it on or glue it on or whatever. And then I'll come back in that way. It just kind of makes the video not seem so drawn out and boring. <laughs> Keeps the interest. So hang on. Okay, so I have that one sewn on, and I love the look of that, and it's not too much here to where it's going to hide everything else that I have billowing out. So you, when you're doing a billowing journal, you kind of want it to give, um, you want to give it an, like a waterfall effect to make sure that you can see all of your goodies that are coming out of your journal. And you don't always have to sew. Like on this page here, I would like a little piece of eyelet just to kind of start the billowing part down here on the bottom and so I have this pretty piece of eyelet I am um, a sucker for eyelet so I'm just gonna put this here and that way it'll spill out um, the bottom of the page so I just took some Fabri-Tac and added that to the bottom and then I also want things to spill out the top or billow out the top and you don't always have to have things from this side of the page, you know, you can have it from this side of the page. And so I think I want to put something up here and it doesn't always have to go all the way across whatever surface that you're putting it on. So like for this one, I think I would like a piece of this. I love this. I love the organic look and feel of it. And I'm not a huge blingy, shiny type person, but I don't mind it on this because I do like the organic look of this piece of trim. So for pieces like this, I just stitched it across the top so that you have, and I love having, you know, the piece on each side and she doesn't look so weird with her head chopped off. <laughs> and then going forward, I think I would like to add a little bit of color, not too much because again, I wanna go with the more neutral tones. But I'd like to add maybe a page tab on this page. And I think I have some ticking. So I just added a tab from the ticking across there. And that just gives it a little bit of color. You can see that color through the lace a little bit. And, you know, of course, from the side, you'll be able to see it really well. Okay, and I'm thinking about maybe trying to put something on the edge of this. But I'm almost afraid to. I just don't want to mess this up. I think I'll wait on that. Um, but I do want to have something else coming out of the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my clips back on here. Just, just to hold this down. And then I added a little bit of shiny down here on the bottom of this page. And I think I want to put on this page, I think I want to put one of my sewing pattern ruffles like that and so then when you when you have the book closed you have that pretty little ruffle billowing out the edge and then on the next page i think i would like to put a little tab here and have this really pretty um it's a piece of a sari um 
and it just gives it a little bit of color and it goes perfect with this page. So I just stitched it on there. And then I think on this next page, I want something coming out the top, but I think I want a different color than the white because I have the white there. So I have the gold and I kind of like that. So I think I'm gonna stitch that up here on this side. So that looks pretty like that. And then the next two pages, they're um, folded, so you can't really do a whole lot with those. But I do want something kind of billowing out the bottom of this page. And I have this really pretty bohemian looking fabric. And I thought it would be pretty to stitch not just, you know, something to billow at the bottom, but make it into a pocket as well. And th that way you still see the pretty page underneath it. But then you also have the billowing effect as well. And so I just stitched that on and now it's a pretty little pocket and it's see-through. It's just as pretty with something in the pocket as it is without. This page I'm not going to do anything to because it's a little fragile, but this page I absolutely love. And I think it would be really pretty with like a page tab. And so I have this um, piece of Asari from Asari and I thought it would be pretty to stitch it on maybe right there. So we have that there, and then I think again, because this one's so thin, I probably won't put anything on it, but I think here would be the perfect spot for another something billowing out the side. And how pretty would that be? Because the way I stitch it in, I could stitch here, up through here and here, and then you could have a little tuck on the side like that and so you have a little pocket here and you can use that for a pocket now i think i do want to put something up at the top of the page here so i added uh, this little cream colored eyelet ruffle here and i wanted to add something at the bottom to billow off the page so i just put a really a neutral sheer white material that just kind of falls out of the journal and then on this page, I thought I'd like to put something here. And so I have these butterflies, and I thought those would be super pretty just going along that fold. How pretty is that? Okay, and then I put the handmade paper here because I think that's gorgeous. Now, what I want to do is I kind of want to go to the back of the journal because I have some things that I want to billow out from the, um, the journal that I don't want to overwhelm it and have it in the front so that it, you know, takes away from all the other things. So I'm going to go ahead and flip to the back of the journal. I'm going to scoot these out for just a little bit. And this very last piece here is where I want to put a specific piece. So I have this, I think it's a curtain or maybe, you know, I think it's a curtain. But I absolutely love, love, love this eyelet down here. I just think it's so pretty. But I don't want this much, you know, billowing out because that's that's a whole lot. Um, but I thought maybe I could cut this off and kind of bring it up and maybe make a pocket here and let it billow out that way. So let's kind of get an idea. This is just kind of how I do this. Yeah, see, so then if I have it billowing out this far, then the other things I can have billowing out, you know, stacked a little in a kind of a waterfall effect. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and get it on here, and that way we can move backwards. Okay, so this is what I went with, and I love how it turned out. So you have a little pocket down here at the bottom. Um, I didn't like the way it was. I was going to try and leave this attached at the top, but I thought it was super cute just to put it as a page tab at the top. It looks kind of like a little window. So, super cute the way that one turned out. And then, I think a couple of pages over. Just kind of looking through. I'm thinking maybe this page. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have this fringe that I thought I would like to add. So I thought it would be super cute on here as well. So right there. And then 
I was thinking a couple of pages over. Not on that one. Hmm. I don't like all these pages that have... Okay, this page. This one right here. I have this gorgeous, gorgeous, very vintage lace. And I thought it would be really pretty hanging off the bottom. So I have that there. And I want to go back again because I want to put another one of my sewing pattern paper ruffles. And I want it to be pretty big billowing out. So I'm going to put it right here. So I added that on there to billow out the side. And I think they're super pretty like that. They give it a very vintage look to it. And then I wanted to come kind of up through here. Maybe here. And put this piece here so it can billow out as well. And add a little lace to that sewing pattern ruffle. Like that. And then I want to come this way. And I think I want to put a ruffle here. I don't know if I want it on this side. I think I'm going to try and put it on this side here. And I want to do it with this. It's a really pretty eyelet scrap. And I think I can ruffle it up and make it look really pretty. Okay, so I've got that added on that way. It looks really pretty on that page. And just kind of flipping through to see where else I might like to have one. Now, sometimes I'll go ahead and do the sides and the bottoms, and then I'll kind of gauge at the top what to do. But I have a really pretty pink ruffle that I think I would like to put on the side of this. So it's this, and I bought these off of Amazon, and I love how they turn out. So I'm just going to ruffle it along the edge just to give it a really soft, just a tiny, tiny bit of color. It's not so much that it would overwhelm it, as you can see there. So it just kind of blends in really well. Okay, so just really soft, very delicate and pretty. I love, love, love the way that looks against that white braille paper. And then just a couple of more things. I think I want to do another um, page tab. And I have this really pretty wide lace here. And I thought it would be a pretty page tab. So we're going to do that. We're almost finished, guys. Okay, so we've got that there. Sorry, I had to put up my phone. It almost died on me. Okay, then we're going to flip on through, and I think I want something on this one, and I have this really pretty other lace that was on the same spool with that. This is a gift from a friend, so I think I'm going to put this right down the edge here. Okay, so I've got that on there, and then I knew that I wanted to put this piece here, so I stuck it down in there to, to remind me that that's where I wanted it. So I think this would be pretty. Um, it's the same thing that I've got billowing out here. But I think that would be really, really pretty. I think I'm just going to use three of the scallops. So I've got that down. I have hoarded this for so long because I am so in love with it. I just think it's so pretty. And as I'm looking at it, I see this and this together. And it kind of, it needs a break between. So I'm going to go to this page here. And I'm going to put something in between to kind of be a barrier between the same patterns, so to speak. So I think I would like for this piece here to billow out like this. And I just kind of want to look at that and see what that's going to look like. I do like that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this piece down. Okay, so I got that down and then... I went ahead and added this piece just simply because this was the first piece I pulled out. I knew I wanted this piece in this journal. Um, and I just kind of kept, <laughs> I kept not adding it because I was saving it. <laughs> Gotta love the way we hoard. Okay, so I'm going to close the journal or close the 
all the pages and see how that looks. Yum. I kind of love it. <laughs> I really, really do. So um, I think I'm going to call it a day for, for now um, or a video. And um, I'm going to add some things in the top, um, but I won't do that on camera so that we can go ahead and um, keep moving with all the fun stuff. So anyways, that is how I kind of add the initial billowing elements. And um, as you can see, when you close it, it billows out the bottom really pretty. It doesn't billow out the side as much as I thought it would, but that's okay because we're going to add some things to it. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this process and I hope you join me for the next one. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that thanks button right there, somewhere right there, or the join button right below that um, to become a member and get the perks. And let me know if you have any comments or questions, and I'll see you in the next video. Big hugs.